So we're going to combine what you know about normal variables so far and look at doing multiples of distributions and combining them together and all sorts of things with that. So if we know this about x and y, we've got their mean and their standard deviations or variances. Um, so first of all, let's have a look at doing ax. So we're taking our x distribution and multiplying it by some constant a. So we know that that will also follow a normal distribution. The mean will be multiplied by a, and the variance gets multiplied by a squared. If you're looking at ax plus b, then you've got your distribution x multiplied by a constant a and then added a constant b. This will also follow a normal distribution. The mean will be multiplied by a and added b. But the adding b doesn't affect the variance. Adding a constant doesn't change how much your data spreads. So that will stay as a squared sigma 1 squared. And we can combine the two um, distributions x and y with multiples of each of them. So we can do ax plus or minus by. And that will also follow a normal distribution since both x and y are normal and they're just being multiplied by constants. So the mean will be a times the mean of x plus b times the mean of y. Or if you had subtracted those distributions, you would subtract the means. The variance, whether you've added or subtracted, will always be an add, because you're going to add the, the, the spread of those to each other. That's always going to be positive. OK, so here's an example. We've got x following this normal distribution with a mean of 15 and variance of 3. We want to state the distribution of 4x. Since x is normal, we know 4x is also normally distributed. So the mean will be 4 times 15. And the um, variance will be 4 squared times 3. Now for 4x minus 3, we know that is also normally distributed. The mean will be 4 times 15 and take away 3. Uh, however, the minus 3 doesn't affect the variance, so we keep that at 4 squared times 3 being 48. OK, we have this next example. Now, usually you would be given this all in um, words. I'm trying to shorten the, the notation so we can just get on with working it out. But you would be told all of these details in words. So we have Alex and Josh running every weekday. Uh, we're measuring their distance in kilometres and I'm using A to represent Alex and J to represent um, Josh and how far they've run. So Alex runs... Um, a distance that is normally distributed with a mean of 8 and a standard deviation of 1.5. Josh runs with a mean distance of 8.5 and a standard deviation of 2. So first of all, we're going to find the mean and standard deviation of the total daily distance run by Alex and Josh. And then we will look at the probability that on a randomly chosen day, Josh runs at least one and a half times further than Alex. OK, so part one. We're looking for the mean of um, the total daily distance. So we want the expectation of A plus J. That's the same as doing the mean of one plus the mean of the other. So that's 8 plus 8.5 and that's 16.5 kilometres. Now the variance is what we want to work with next. We can't go straight to the standard deviation. All of the things that we know about um, how these work with combining uh, these distributions uh, all of the, the rules that we have are about the variance. We have to work with that and then work the standard deviation out from that afterwards. If you try to do it all with standard deviation, you're going to mess up and it's just not going to work properly. Right, so the variance of A plus J we know from the last slide is the same as doing the variance of A plus the variance of J. So that gives us 6.25 kilometres, but we don't want variance, we want standard deviation. And of course, you know that that is the square root of the variance. So we get the standard deviation is 2.5 kilometres. Right, the next bit's not going to fit on this slide, so I'm just going to copy it across to the next page. So here we have oops, the um, information copied across. So we've got to find the probability that on a randomly chosen day, Josh runs at least 1.5 times further than Alex. So we're considering this. J has to be greater than 1.5 lots of A. You can also think of that as J minus 1.5 A has to be bigger than zero. So now the distribution we're looking at is J minus 1.5 A. We know that that's normally distributed since it's a combination of normal distributions. Now to work out the mean, 
we're going to do 8.5 minus 1.5 lots of 8. So the mean of Josh minus 1.5 lots the mean of Alex. So that gives us minus 3.5. The variance will be 2 squared plus 1.5 squared times 1.5 squared. We need to add those variances, remember. We're not subtracting them. Um, even though it says j minus 1.5a, you must always add your variances. So then we get 9 from um, that uh, calculation. No, we don't. That's not right. It's actually 6.25. There we go. So then continuing on with that, we're now looking for the probability that uh, we get a, a number that's greater than 0. So we've got this distribution. We're looking for more than 0. So that's the same as 1 minus the probability that j minus 1.5a is less than 0. So that's 1 minus the probability that z is less than that number. 1 minus phi of 1.4. So that is giving us a final answer of 0 0.0808. Now I'm going to stick with that same theme. Um, this time, third part, we're going to find the probability that in a randomly chosen week, Alex runs further than Josh. Need to be careful with this one. Okay, so if I say TA is the total that Alex runs and TJ is the total that Josh runs, then TA is the same as saying A1 plus A2 plus A5. So five separate instances on the five different days on the, the weekdays that he runs um, added together. Now remember this is not the same as if you did five times A. It's very tempting to jump in here and do five lots of A rather than thinking about this as five instances of A added up. Okay, so now the probability that the total Alex runs is greater than the total Josh runs. It's the same as saying the probability that the total for Alex is less than the total, uh, sorry, minus the total for Josh is greater than zero. Okay, so now thinking about the distribution of TA minus TJ, it's normally distributed. Now the means will be five lots of eight minus five lots of 8.5, straightforward. And the variance will be 5 times 1.5 squared, so that's 5 lots of Alex's variance squared. Now notice we're not squaring the 5 because it's, it's doing 5 separate instances of his distance, not 5 times bigger one of his distances. Okay, So the 5 does not get squared. We're going to add together, and again remember your variances must be added even though we're doing a TA minus TJ. And then the same with Josh, the 5 times 2 squared, where the 5 is not being squared. Okay, so we get our variance of 31.25. So now that looks like this. We're looking for the probability that um, that number is greater than 0, so that's 1 minus it being less than 0. So this is the uh, same as saying 1 minus the probability that z is less than 0.447. So reading off our table, we can get the probability is 0 0.3275.